Good morning, everybody. Glad that you are here with us again at Quinn Chapel, where Jesus Christ is Lord, and in Lord is Lord indeed. Glad you had had you with us. Thank you, those who are visiting with us virtually today, and those of you who are here in person. We thank God for your presence. Father, we love you today. We magnify you. We extol you. We lift you up. We give your name the praise, the honor, and glory. If it had not been for you on our side, we would have been swallowed up long ago. But today, God, we come into the house of God to give you your name, the worship, the praise that is deserved. We pray for those, Lord God, who are outside this place and those who are here, that you will minister to all of us, God, in a very special way. We pray that all that is said today will be an encouragement for those around about us as they go forth from moment to moment in every aspect of the rest of their lives. Thank you for going to the cross. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for making uh, that sacrifice, Lord God, that you made on the cross at Calvary. No one could have done what you have done. And so we give your name, the praise, the honor, and the glory for just being the God that you are. You died that we all might be set free. And thank God for you. Amen. 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 It's so interesting today to be in the house of God, and we want to thank you for coming and joining with us again. Uh, uh, there are so many things going on around us, and we just want to let you know that God is still on the throne. God is still in place. God is still dealing with us and still loving us. And though it seems from time to time that we're not going to make it, heaven belongs to us. It kind of reminds me of the children of Israel when they were coming uh, from Egypt. And after being in bondage for 400 some years there in Egypt, when they came, it looked like they would never get to the promised land. And God promised Abraham and Isaac and Jacob that he would give them a land that flowed with milk and honey. And they got out in that wilderness experience and began to do their own thing. And guess what happened? They got traveling around in a circle going nowhere because they were disobedient to God. So, so what is God saying to us today? It seems like we are like the children of Israel going round and round in a circle and going nowhere. But yet, for those of us who keep our hearts and minds stayed on the Lord Jehovah God, we will find out that heaven and the promised land of glory belongs to us. I want to thank you for being with us today. I want to thank you for those of you in particular who have already expressed faith in Jesus Christ. You have made the greatest decision of your life to be part of the kingdom of God. I'm excited about it. I hope you are because God did it all for us that we might have eternal life. Now, I see sometimes that people are uh, they call you on the telephone and they want to know, they want to give you a package plan. They want to say to you, you can get call this number and you get two for the price of one and all that kind of thing. Aren't you glad that Jesus Christ made an offer greater than that? Do you know that if you come to Christ and your whole household come to Christ, you can get everybody in the house saved for one salvation. And that's the salvation of Jesus Christ. He paid the price no one else could pay to set us free. So when we come to him, bring everybody you have with you. Don't leave any of your family members behind. You're planning to go to heaven? Take the family with you. Open up the word of God. Show them what God says and that, that truth will set you free and make your whole house free when they and you come to believe in the promises of God. Now that talks about the word of God and truth. How about that? The word of God and truth. Do you realize that, that the world says this and the world says that, but God says this. Now we have a generation and a period of time that we're living in and you must stick with God's word. You must read God's word. And when Joshua came out uh, to lead the people after the death of Moses, I think Joshua was a little upset about how he was going to do it because he realized that Moses was a mighty man of God and that he was just not up to the task from his perspective. And God told him, just as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. Thank you, Lord. And he said, in essence, it wasn't Moses 
that brought the children over here. It wasn't Moses that brought them from the, over the Red Sea and through the wilderness experience. It was I, Joshua. And as I was with, with, with Moses, I will be with you and this people. And he told Moses, Joshua, excuse me, he told Joshua a very interesting thing. He said, Joshua, meditate day and night on my word. Stay with my word and you will have good success and prosper. So what we're saying here at Quinn today, but follow God's word. Uh, what we're saying is that if you follow God's word, you will prosper in the word of God. Sometimes the world says all kinds of things. It says, well, they say, um, uh, well, there are so many this and so many that. And God said, that ain't true. Huh? They said, well, there are uh, uh, so many sexes and so many uh, uh, this and that about this. And God says, no, 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 it, it's not like that. How do you know? How do you know? God said in Genesis, I made them male and female. End of the story. All the other genders and all that other stuff is not of God. And that's why we here at Quinn are encouraging you, stay with God's word. There is nothing like God's word. Amen. Today we'll, we'll be looking at some things as Reverend Parker comes before us. And we'll be looking at some things as Reverend Wilson will come and share a word with us today. But we are involved with the truth of God's word so that you may be set free. No matter where you are, no matter what your circumstances are, you can get the blessing of God through Jesus Christ. So let us look to God now again in prayer and ask God to bless us as they come and share with us today. Eternal God, our Father, we are asking you to continually bless us. If there be anybody in our midst, God, both here or virtually, who have need or stand in need of you, speak to their hearts today. Send the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let them feel your presence. Let them know that you alone can meet all the needs of their lives. We are excited about what you're going to say to us today. We are excited about how you're going to encourage us. So we're going to ask Reverend Parker now if she will come and um, share with us uh, a scripture and share with us about this whole ministry of praying and seeking God, not only for ourselves, but for the whole world. Reverend Parker, will you come, please? I'll be back right after she finishes. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Robinson. Uh, it is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time where we as saints can come together and praise and worship his holy name. Uh, we have been um, asking everyone out there to uh, purchase a globe because the Bible tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And the purpose of purchasing, purchasing the globe is to put it somewhere uh, where it will remind us to always pray for different continents, countries, and even people here that are in the United States, our leaders, our, our pastors, and everyone. So if you would like to be a part of this global prayer ministry here at Quinn Chapel, AME Church, under the leadership of our pastor, Pastor Robinson, uh, please let us know by purchasing a globe, or you can call us or get in contact with us to let us know that you uh, want to be a part of this awesome ministry where we pray one for the other. That information will be given to you at the um, end of this uh, service. And I would like to lift up our youth, those who are graduating, and actually people all over the world who are graduating, but especially uh, the youth, uh, those who have graduated. And um, there, were an, there were an article about a U.S. Uh, baseball player, 18 years old, jumped off a boat in the Bahamas, and uh, he was celebrating finishing school. And it, and it said that it was a late night dare, but his split decision had deadly consequences. So as he slips into the dark waters, 
um, that decision that he made, his parents, his loved one would never see him again. Mm -hmm. So we are praying that for the youth that during this this hot this um, season or vacation, that they will make godly choices and that they will choose life. We also praying uh, for their salvation. Amen. That we as Christians or their parents who are in charge of them, bring them to church. Uh, take them to Bible study. Take them to vacation Bible school uh, and be involved in their life. So let's continue to pray for them. The inquiry reported that in Ocean City, shut down beaches early, uh, citing unruly teens. And the Ocean uh, City mayor there, uh, in a news release, issued that the police reported 999 incidents over Memorial Day weekend. So let us pray for our youth and continue to uh, uh, let them make godly choices. They say that um, uh, there were uh, underage drinking, there was vandalism, assaulting, and shoplifting. And so they lift the curfew there from, um, from uh, 1 o'clock a.m. to 11 p.m. So if ever our youth and those that are all over the world need prayer right now, Father, we come to you in Jesus' holy and precious and righteous name. Lord, we look at our youth, God, who are graduating. They are so excited. And sometimes when they celebrate, they're celebrating may be a daily decision. So, God, we lift them up right now in Jesus' name that that we will minister a word to them so they can make their own decision and realize that there are consequences associated with decisions that they make. So we lift them up right now. We lift the parents up of that young man and his family all over the world, God, that they will make godly choices. And if they don't know you in the pardon of their sins, that they will cry out and say, what must I do to be saved? So, Lord, we thank and praise you and magnify you in Jesus' holy and precious and righteous name. Amen. 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 I will be reading the scriptures to you today, and it comes from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 11 through 25 from the New King James Version. That's Hebrews chapter 10 verse 11 through 25 from the New King James Version. And it reads, And every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifice, which can never take away sins. But this man, yes. this man, yes. after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, set down at the right hand of God. Amen. From that time waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us for after he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and into their minds, and I will write them. Then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now where there is remission of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiness, holiest of the blood of Jesus and by a new living way which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our faith without wavering. 
For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up, stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as is the matter of some, but exhorting one another with much, let me say that again, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Amen. Thank you again, Reverend Parker, for the, uh, the prayer for those uh, who are graduating and those who are going through trials and tribulations mm -hmm. in the country and around the world. And that statement you made about this young man jumping off the boat, jumping into the darkness, mm -hmm. taking a dare, uh, is so heartbreaking. Breaking because after uh, 12 years perhaps of, high, of school, he had come to the point where he graduated. And here we find him making the wrong decision. We want to encourage you today all over the world, all over the uh, country here, that you make the right decision. Jesus is standing there waiting for you to make that decision that has to be made. And we, that decision is to give your life to Christ. And so we are so thankful to God for just, just for what he did on that cross yes. today. So indeed, those of you who are out there and you're graduating, yes. we want to encourage you, yes. hook up with Jesus Christ yes. now. Yes. Do not allow the world to push you the wrong yes. way because eternity is too long to live in the wrong place. Eternity must be lived in the a confident the assurance of heaven where Jesus Christ has made provisions for you to enjoy the rest of your life. If you're in a restaurant sometime, they'll say, enjoy. And that's what God has made for you, provisions for you to enjoy the rest of your life. Yeah. Don't jump into the dark because the dark can destroy you forever. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to the word that's going to come forth today. I want to encourage you, if you were finding your Bibles, Find Hebrews if you didn't find it the first time and follow with it as the preacher preaches the word today. Look at Hebrews chapter 10 in the New Testament and he will be preaching uh, using the New King James Version. Uh, but whatever version you have at the moment, you use that version and you will find out that God is going to say something to us about not jumping into the dark because of the, the yeah. provisions he has made. He has called you and he has called me to be winners and not losing. Yeah. Jesus is the winner man, yeah. amen. So let's see what the word of God has for you and for me today and let's look. Now we're gonna ask Reverend uh, William C. Wilson if he would come and share a word with us. My brother, preach the word in Jesus' yeah. name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. 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 To God be the glory for the great work he's doing in and around our lives. We just thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Whew. Yes, it is a beautiful day today. We're celebrating Communion Sunday. We're going to always honor him and make sure that we remember the work that he did on the cross. In fact, the scripture that we're going to cover today shows us and, and is a witness to us, a testimony to us, that how God in his wisdom has changed the sacrificial system to a system that is one and done. I heard it done, I heard it said earlier, and I, and I read the scripture and I'm looking over and I'm saying that, you know, we need to prepare ourselves now because all the work has been done. Yes. All we have to do is be obedient and follow what the Lord has placed in our hearts to do. So we've been called for such a time as this. We are ministers, so uh, let me not prolong the word. Let me just lift up these words for your hearing so that we can have a focal point for, from which we're going to go from. I'm going to be reading Hold Fast for, for Your Confession. It's 19 through 25, and it's very simple. It's like this here. It says that, therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way which he can concentrate for us through the veil that is his flesh. 
and having a high priest over the house of God. Man, that's awesome. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled with an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as it is a matter of some, a manner of some, a habit of some, but exalting one another so much the more as you see the day approaching. My subject for today is going to be perseverance. Jesus is the winning side. You need to have Jesus as you persevere to get you through. You're a winner. Don't count yourself short. You're a winner with Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus as you move mightily in this here, your servant. As he decrease, you increase, O Father God. Speech. Preach your word, O oh Father God. Let those who have an ear to hear and a heart to receive, O oh Father God, let them hear what thus the Lord has to say. And let us also embrace these words that we may follow through with these words and practice them day in and day out. And let us not be dis distracted. Let us not fall short. Let us not yield to the world but be obedient and follow your teaching through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, my introduction is that you should look at this point here that I'm going to uh, We live in a strange time. There are more than 7.9 billion people in the world, but uh, uh, at, at least, uh, uh, but at least in the USA, uh, very few feel like they have a real friend. Hmm. In the USA, it is a, it's projected that the population is going to reach 336.7 million people by 2023. People are more mobile in the, in, than in the past. Staying in any one place for more than five years, it seems like that's a little uh, strange uh, for them to stay longer than that, but uh, so long-term friendships are becoming rare a uh, commodity. It's rare for people to actually know their neighbors. With garage door openers and, and busy work schedule, it's, in, it's possible to live somewhere for years without even knowing the name or what your neighbor really looks like. An article by Timothy Morgan puts it this way, proximity is a lost cause as Americans are drawn into tag team, parenting, commuters, uh, marriages, and distant learning. People are increasingly cocooning themselves into isolated worlds where their only daily contact is with cyber buddies and, and cyber communities. Oh, I'm not saying it's all bad, but I'm going to say this here. If people have any close relationship at all, it is a cyber relationship in a chat room or a social media network. You know, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and uh, Instagram, and others. In fact, nine, nine times out of ten, and way to we communicate with one another, we probably send an email or a text message instead of trying to call and talk to the person personally. Changing the rules of personal interaction uh, to civil discourse, the engagement of conversation intended to enhance understanding, it is a function of free speech. We use the media as a means to uh, form a freedom of speech to do the things that we don't normally want to do in front of somebody because we're afraid of confrontation. According to the research summary of smart firms and cell phones in the USA, it is at an all-time high. The dependency to communicate, stay connected, and be informed daily has reached over 307 million users in USA as of 2022, with 85% of the users being not children, but adults. 47% of the web traffic in the U.S. originates from a mobile device. The problem with us today is that we have, we were not 
even created to live in virtual isolation regardless of the pandemic. God made us to be relational, real flesh and blood relationships, face to face, up close and personal relationship, the kind of relationships that make room for things uh, that like a hug or a pat on the back or, 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 a, or a pat on the head or words of encouragement, a tear, a prayer, or maybe a, a good joke or a shared belly laugh, gathering at cookouts or picnics around the kitchen and so forth. All these things have been put on the table because of the pandemic, because we have now went to social media. We have other alternatives, a way of gathering. Uh, the scripture that caught my eye more so than anything, it was not forsaken uh, the summary of ourselves, Hebrew 1025. It says, as it is some manner, sometimes we practice these things, but exhorting one another, encouraging one another, so much the more as we see the day approaching. We need to understand that, here's my, here's my, here's my fear part, we need to understand that we are relational. That's right. We have to be relational. We need to be with one another. Yes. We need to talk to one another face to face. Jesus did the th same thing. He broke down the barrier. He tore down the, the, the curtain. And I'm going to talk to you some more about that. But my title is Jesus, the winning side. Can you relate? I need to pray again. Lord, Father, God, I just thank you right now. Yeah. Woo! I thank you because, number one, we're losing our ways, oh, Father God. We're not focusing on you. We're, we're trying to find alternative ways, oh, Father God. Now we're going to introduce our artificial intelligence to be able to do more of the work instead of having people being able to be involved in, in the in daily care of the, uh, of the world. My Lord, thank you so much for this word. Thank you so much for the idea that we need to be able to look to the hills where I'm coming from. we got to be able to be relating to one another constantly because we have Jesus as our source. He is the one who was our redeemer. He's the one who did it all for us, and we're going to talk about it today. Lord, have your way with this, your servant, as he decrease, you increase, oh, Father God. Lord, make your word so, magnify your word so much so that anyone who has an ear to hear will hear that's what the Lord has to say to them. Yes. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Yes. Amen. I needed that because I needed to calm down because when I start looking at what's going on here, at, at this exact moment, we understand that Jesus has already been to the cross. We know that he had changed the sacrificial system that we know don't lead to, to worry about what took place. Jesus established the church, the body of Christ, a people who will become in fellowship and break bread together. As we read the Bible forwards and, and backwards, we find the different groups of people coming together on one accord, worshiping God. Isaac, <clears throat> the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What do you find in scripture is the church is fellowship. Koinia is a Greek word that they use and it means fellowship or communion uh, with God or more commonly uh, with fellow Christians or sharing our life with one another. Don't you know that we get together and we talk about our life's experiences, what we've been through, what we have to deal with, and then we, by sharing our, our, our life stories and so on, which is our testimony, we can be encouragers to others and let them know that they're not alone, that they can also rise above their circumstances and situation and be able to share their life with someone else, to be an encourager to someone else, and as you keep this thing going, that we become more uh, uh, equipped stronger, be able to overcome some of the situations or challenges of life that we have to deal with. In fact, we don't share life too much. We are not like the church at all because we tend to want to remove ourselves from situation. Our article in Reader's Digest uh, called, What Good is a Tree? It explains that when the roots of trees touch or don't touch, there is a fungal substance present that reduces the competition. In fact, this unknown fungus helps link roots of different trees, even a dissimilar species in the whole forest. And what I'm trying to say is that they don't touch because sometimes there's a competition going on, but this fungus seems to keep a little barrier, keep them in, in, uh, in harmony. Uh, the whole forest may be linked together. If one tree has access to water, another may have access to nutrients, and a third to sunlight. The tree has means to share with one another. 
uh, the resources that's available. Like trees in the forest, Christians in the church need to support one another. That's my point. Look again at verse 26. This verse says that I believe speaks more to, uh, uh, more to us than making sure we have the perfect attendance in church. I think we need to guard against isolating ourselves from the rest of the body because it keeps us from being, a, being able to encourage one another and help us drift away. And I'll talk about that some more a little bit later on. See, there's a story of a man who, who missed church for a number of weeks. I, I know there's some more that missed it more than a couple of weeks, but I'm not going to talk about them. Uh, the preacher had often called him and asked where he was, but the man kept putting the preacher off. Finally, one day, the preacher stopped, for, uh, stopped by for a visit right. on a cold winter day. Mm. The man was sitting in front of the fireplace and welcomed the preacher and tried to engage him in conversation. However, the minister didn't say much. He just walked over to the fireplace, pulled out, pulled one of the logs away from the flame, and, and then went and sat down. They sat there in silence for, a longest, for the longest time, watching the fire. And as they watched, the log that set off by itself, the fire on it began to smolder, and it went out. The preacher and the man sat for a long time looking into the fireplace. And then the man said, okay, I'll be at church next Sunday. But the truth is that developing real relationship is not easy. And if you didn't get the, the moral of that story, it says that that log by itself, once you take it out of the fire, cannot sustain itself for a long period of time. Amen. Eventually that fire that it had is going to smolder and going to go out. That's right. That's right. So it got to be connected to the big fire in order for it to be able to maintain and keep on burning. But the truth of this delving relationship, again, is easy, not easy. Because there, that's why in Hebrews uh, we give five specific calls to action. Each one is preceded by the words, let us. Uh, I want you to follow me as I go forth from this point on to talk about the let us uh, verses and so forth. But I do have to, I, I always got to go back. I always got to go back. I always got to go back. Let you know that there's some things you need to understand before you go forward in order to follow these, these schemes and these themes that is going to be presented to you today. Um, I, this morning when I was working on the scripture and so forth, it seemed to me that God has a tendency of giving you so much information. I'm not going to try to feed you all of it because, number one, I just got a little pocket of time. But I want you to understand that there's more. You have to go ahead and read the scripture for yourself. You got to study the word for yourself. I, I recommend that you pray first and then you read the scripture and then pray some more because I want you to understand you got to ask the Lord, the Holy Spirit that dwells within you to be able to give the discernment over what he's trying to mention and talk to you about. It's interesting enough that when you start looking at it, the idea of drawing near, it says in verse uh, 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 20, uh, actually I'm going to start with Hebrews 10, 19 and 20 because I think if you want to be on the winning side you might as well get the whole gist of what Jesus is talking about here. Therefore brethren having boldness to enter the holiest uh, by the blood of Jesus by the new and living way which he consecrated us through the veil that is his flesh the writer of Hebrew has now concluded a doctrinal section of his epistles and has fully shown the superiority of Christ in all areas. In the Old Testament times the people were kept at a distance. Only the priests uh, was allowed to enter the holy place and only the uh, uh, the high priest could enter into the most holiest place. No one else was allowed and you had to be a Levite in order to be a descendant from Aaron. Uh, now that, that, that has all changed. Uh, God has special uh, has no special place where only a special cast of men uh, may approach him. Instead all believers may come into his presence by faith at any time and from any place on the earth. Our approach is by a new and living way. 
It is a, a new way because the death of Jesus on the cross was created, uh, 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 has created a completely new situation. The way to be in the old covenant neither gave life nor removed liability to death. It was an interesting thing when you look at that. Mm -hmm. It says, no liability. Well, how's that? The way to peace and reconciliation was established because if you look at what it says here, it says, well, he established a new situation. The old covenant gave life, nor remove liability to death. The way to peace and reconciliation under the old covenant was through the dead bodies of animals slain. But Christ is living and even lives to make intercession for us. Therefore, he is the new living way. My Lord, through the veil, the high priest lifted up or drew it aside the veil to, that separate the holy from the most holy, holy place. Oh, that he might have access to the divine majesty. And now the veil has been ripped from the top to the bottom at the crucifixion of Christ to show that the way to the holiest of holy uh, was then laid open. It means, likewise, our approach to the throne must be through the mediation of Christ and his sacrificial death. His pierced side is the way to the holiest. Ah, oh, here the veil, his humanity, is rent in the kingdom of heaven open to all believers. Remembering every time we enter God's presence, we enter in, with prayer and with worshiping. Let us remember that the privileges was brought for us by a tremendous cost. Jesus on the cross. Hebrews 21, it says here, having the high priest over the house of God, we have a great high priest. I want to say that again. We have a great high priest. Be confident and know that we have a priest who's been through everything we ever been through, who knows us more than we know ourselves, and he's been able to stay faithful without sin and pay the price that we could not pay. He is the one that's looking over us from day to day. He is the one that's praying for us day in and day out. Even in John 17, when he was on this earth in his humanity, he prayed for us. Those who was with him, those he prayed for himself, those who were with him, and those who have not seen him at all. Mm. To God be the glory. Let us draw near because even as we are priests, according to 1 Peter 2, 9, uh, we, yet we still need a great high priest to cover us. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure blood. Oh, that's what Hebrews 10, 22 talks about. It talks about that this believer uh, 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 brought, uh, 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 brought privileges it was the blood of Jesus that brought us the privilege to be able to go and confront and draw near to God. How wonderful uh, beyond all words that we are invited to have an audience, have audience with the Most High God. Oh, not with this world celebrate, celebrate. We can't even visit some of the ce uh, uh, celebrities that we have in this world today. But we can go to God anytime. But with the sovereign God of the universe, he's available 24-7. This, there is a fourfold description how we should spiritually groom ourselves and enter the throne room. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. It says here, with a true heart, that the people of Israel drew near to God with their mouth, honoring him with their lips. But their hearts were often far from him. Our approach should be with utter sincerity, genuineness, authenticity. We should not be faking it. We should be real about our feelings and how we should go to God uh, with a true heart. In full assurance of faith, we should also, uh, in, in full assurance of faith is the second point, we are to draw near with utter confidence in the promises of God and with a firm conviction that we shall have a gracious reception into his presence. 
I remember back in Exodus, I think it was 32 or 33, I remember that, uh, that the people sinned so bad and that God could not dwell among them and come in their presence because if he did, he might consume them. So what he did was he stayed away from them and told Moses, I can't come down there because if I do, I, I, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna hurt these people. So he said, well, Moses said, okay. Uh, he took his tent and went outside the camp. He went far away, made a big distance between him and the camp. And then he set up his camp. It's called the Tent of Meeting. And there at that place is where he and God met. And everybody else watched from a distance because they knew if they had to go be with God, they had to come individually one by one from the camp to go out to where Moses was in order to have a fellowship. It's an interesting thing because they could not, God could not come in their presence because it was contaminated. He got to protect his holy. He's holy. And he's always going to protect his holiness. And then we here's another point. Having our hearts sprinkled with, uh, from an evil conscience. Uh, our testimony is, uh, conscience now no more condemns us. For his own most precious blood once for all has washed and cleansed us. Cleansed us in the eyes of God. What he's saying is that along with this other part that I got to can't I can't separate it because they both the they both the heart and the body goes together. Our bodies are washed with pure water, and it's symbolic. It's all symbolic language, but the refre the reference is that the sprinkled hearts and the washed bodies should be taken together. See, the washing of the body with pure water is a reference to baptism. See, uh, in the baptism part. Is a baptism is the outward sign of an inward chain of an inward cleansing, and it was and it was the latter that was the more important. Now let me talk to you about this this baptism. When when Jesus Christ was back, uh, uh, baptized, he rose up and had the Holy Spirit. But when he was dead and buried, <clears throat> our sins went was buried with them, and they all was disbanded. He paid the price that we couldn't pay. So we were baptized in his death as well. And when he rose again, we were justified, clean slate. So we don't have to worry about our past sins because they all have been forgotten. Uh, 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 so the, here it is. Uh, I mentioned the sprinkling of the hearts signifies the effect of God of, of Christ's blood on our innermost being. Uh, he shed blood, cleanses believers within. Seeing that the sprinkling of the of, of the priests, if you read and, and view, if you were to review Exodus 29, uh, verse 21 and Leviticus 8:30, you will find even more information why it's so significant to be sprinkled with the blood. But in Hebrews 23, it goes on to say, "Let us, let us hold fast, hold fast. the profession of our hope." without wavering, for he is faithful. He is faithful that promised. Nothing must be allowed to turn us from the staunch, the firm, unmovable stance of confession that our hope is only in Christ Jesus. Amen. For those who are tempted to give up the future, unseen blessings of Christianity for the presence, visible things of Judaism during that time, and things that are being presented to us of this time that are not grounded in Christ, there is the reminder that he who promised is faithful. His promises can never fail. No one who trusts in him will ever be disappointed. The Savior will come, and as he promised, and his people will be with him and be glorified like he is also glorified forever. That's a promise. That's what he says he's going to do. So we need to hold fast to that hope that we profess without wavering, without doubting, without wondering about what's going to happen today or tomorrow or the next week. We need to wor worry about what we're dealing with with today. There are a little boy, there was a little boy, uh, I won't give his name because I want to protect his innocence, uh, who lived in a farm with his family in rural Georgia. He was six years old 
and uh, was riding the tractor with his father when a massive machine turned over. The massive machine turned over, the little boy was hurt so badly that he lost the use of one of his arms and suffered damage to the other. While he, in the hospital, the family incurred uh, a $32,000 debt. One day he heard his mother and the father talking outside the hospital room door, his mother weeping and wondering how they were going to pay such a large amount of money. When they came into the room, the little boy informed his mom that he was going to pay the bill himself. She responded as, as you and I would, thank you son, thanking him for his concern, but knowing silently that such a goal was fantasy for a child. My, my, my. But when he got out of the hospital, he began to pick up Bibles along the side of the road every day after school, redeeming the bottles for cash. After several months, he had collected $400 and brought that to his mother. About that time, the little boy learned that aluminum cans can be redeemed and began to collect those as well. The Royal uh, 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 Reynolds Aluminum Company heard of the little boy's endeavor and put him in touch with the Bear Archery Company in Gainesville, Florida. The two companies began donating their scrap aluminum to this young man. After a day after school, for five years, the little boy continued to pick up cans after school. And at 11 years of age, walked into the hospital and paid off his $32,000 debt that he owed the hospital. Who said God ain't good and it ain't possible? The boy's story is amazing because the little boy, motivated by his great love for his parents, sees a gold Sees on a goal, having put his feet on the path to obtain that goal, stayed on it without wavering until its end. That's the kind of perseverance we need to have. We need not to worry about what uh, 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 the, the pandemic did. We don't need to worry about what, 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 what your financial or homelessness or your physical ailments may be or your cancer, whatever you have. We need to understand on a basis that we can hold on to our hope in Christ without wavering. He is faithful to that promise. Yeah. He is not going to fail you. If you have a track record with Jesus, when you look back over your life and see what you've been through, all the hills you had to climb and all the valleys you had to go through, all the mountains that you had to deal with, you know that Jesus was there with you because if he had not been on your side, where would you be right now? So in Hebrews chapter uh, 10, 24, 25, it goes on to say, let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good work. I, I, I want to let you know that one thing about love, love, love is something else. It's a great motivator. It should motivate you to do a lot of different things without anybody having to encourage you. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about agape love. I'm talking about the love that says that I love you enough that number one, I don't care what you're dealing with, I want you to be stronger, I want you to be faster, I want you to be able to endure. Last week we were talking about how we should be able to endure certain things and be able to rise above our circumstances and situation because you have given us the strength. You are, our, you are the one that motivates us, that move us, that we could go ahead and run the race and pass the baton and don't have to look back because we have the confidence that we know that once we got it, we could go ahead and move forward with our lives and so forth. We, we should take time and discover ways of encouraging fellow believers to manifest love and to encourage them to do good works. In the New Testament sense, love is not an emotion but an action of the will. We are commanded to love, therefore it is sometimes, it is sometimes, it is sometimes we can and we must do. It is something that you must do. It's something that I know you can do. There is no reason why you cannot motivate. There's no reason why you cannot do things. Love is the root. Good works are the fruit. 
here are the author, uh, the author is trying to tell us, speaking in mutual activity, it, it is one in which believes encourage one another, not one where leaders direct the rest as to do what they need to do. The danger is we become so involved in this world, we forget the other. See, we, need, we don't have to be prompted. I think it's like Colossians talking about, I don't work for man, I work for the Lord. What I do, I do to, to please him. He is the rewarder, uh, he's going to be my rewarder. And whatever I do, I do because of the love that he shows me. I can show love to someone else, despite how I feel about them. Mm. Mm -hmm. The phrase stir up means to provoke. Sometimes you think of that as in, in the negative, but I'm thinking of in the positive. It's a way to motivate, to excite, to inspire someone to take it to another level. It is used to positively to urge and to stimulate Christian love to stir up one another in agape love so they can do more works. A lot of us sit on the pine and, oh, I don't want to say that. I don't want to talk about laziness. I don't want to talk about insensitivity. I don't want to talk about the lack of, I don't care. I, I did mine earlier, so I don't do no more. Don't you know that your work is not done until God calls you? <laughs> Go ahead, preacher. Corporate worship is important. We must worship together with other believers. So prayer is, is primary. It's important. It's a tool that we must use. But I don't want to just stop there. I want to go to the other part of the verse. 25, it says, not forsaking the assembly of others, not, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as in a manner of some. That means some people practice, have a habit of what not wanting to be uh, with anybody else. They want to be isolated. They want to be into themselves. They say, I don't need nobody. But see, you're not understanding that God ain't create you, created you to be I don't need nobody person. Because you need somebody. You may have somebody, you don't even realize you don't want to admit it, but you do have somebody. You have somebody working in your life every single day. You have Jesus working in your life. You don't see him, he's there because he knows that sometimes we are hard. Oh boy, I hate calling people names. Sometimes we're so stubborn and we think that we got it going on but that we can't take advice. But when God has a way of wanting to talk to you, he may use somebody else to give you advice that you're slacking on one thing and you need to come into the assembly to be able to get the necessary nourishment, the necessary motivation, the necessary uh, the tools and so forth to be able to go to another level because you can't do it by yourself. No man is an idol. That means no man, no woman, no child, no boy. No man, woman, boy, or girl, can be said they're on the island unto themselves. You can't do this by yourself. You gotta be in the corporate face. You gotta be in the family. That's why everybody who has a family, you know what I'm talking about. You can't do it by yourself. If you think you can, you'll find out the consequences for your action. There are some who, uh, uh, there are some among those in the audience of the author of Hebrews who had abandoned the habit of meeting together. They, 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 they may be some who think it's still possible to live a, the Christian life while abandoning the habits of worshiping with God's people. Uh, this should not be the case. The New Testament lends no support to the idea of lone Christians. There's no such thing as a lone Christian out there. Close and regular fellowship with others, believers, is not just a nice idea, but also an absolute necessity for the encouragement of Christian values. Uh, let me put it this way. Iron sharpened iron. If there's no other iron around, how are you going to get sharpened? You can't do it by yourself. You need Christ Jesus. You need that at large. You need them to be over there. The exhortation is very important because I'm encouraging you. Take the Take a, 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 the, exhort, the exhortation that I'm talking about takes on a sense of urgency for you to see the day is approaching. Mm. I don't know when the day is going to come. Yeah. I don't know the minute. I don't know the hour. Gotcha. I don't know the hour or the week, the month, the year. All I can do is look and see the signs 
that the time, end times are coming. The day has, here has overtones of the Old Testament prophetic tradition that speaks to the day in which the God will judge. A tradition that is maintained in the New Testament. Uh, you can refer to Joel chapter 115, or you can refer to 1 Corinthians 1, 8, or 5, 5, or 1 Thessalonians 5, 2. The day of the second coming is approaching when things as we know them will end. So, we must do all the good we can to all people we can in all the ways we can. In conclusion, we have significant privileges associated with our new life in Christ. We have personal access to God through Christ and can draw near to him without an elaborate system. We may grow in faith, overcome doubts and questions, and deepen our relationship with God. We may enjoy the encouragement from our one another. We may worship one with another. We may worship together and not separate. Uh, to neglect Christian meaning is to, be, is to give up the encouragement and the help of other Christians. We gather together to share our faith to strengthen one another in the Lord. As we get closer to the day when Christ will return, we will face many spiritual struggles and even times of persecution. The Antichrist forces will grow in strength. Difficulties should never be an excuse for missing church services. Rather, when difficulties rise, we should make every effort and everything that we do in our being to be faithful to go to the assembly, to be able to be in corporate worship, and be able to be in corporate prayer, just as they did in Acts chapter 4, when they all came together and prayed on one accord because of what uh, the, 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 uh, Peter and Paul uh, uh, oh man, Peter and John. After they was locked up and, 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 and was reprimanded and they went home and told what happened, don't you know those folks prayed and the whole house shook? I believe the houses, the church houses should be shaking all over this place. Mm. Everywhere we should go, everywhere there should be a report, this house was shaking. Because they came on one accord knowing that they are all together on one accord. Believers were all, were all together on one accord and they shook the very foundation of the house. We have the advantage that is Jesus Christ. We have the advantage, Jesus Christ. We have the advantage. Whose side do you believe? What size, what story do you want to lay on? The, the advantage that we have is Jesus. He's the winning side. Amen. 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 At this time, I don't know where you are in your walk with Christ, but I will say this, it's never too late. It's never too late to call on a name that's above every other name. And in the name of Jesus, you can be saved. If you have never really accepted Jesus as your personal savior, at this time, would you listen to this prayer? Dear Lord, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I believe Jesus died for my sins on the cross and rose again on the third day. I repent of my sins. My faith, I receive the Lord Jesus as my Savior. By faith, I receive the Lord Jesus as my Savior. You promised to save me and I believe you because you and God cannot lie. I believe right now that the Lord Jesus is my personal savior and that my sins, that all my sins are, have been forgiven through the precious blood. I thank you, dear Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray this prayer, God heard you and saved you. I personally want you to welcome you into the family of God and rejoice with you because now you're part of his family, the body of Christ. And one day he's coming back. And when that day comes, you're going to be caught up with the rest of us. 
First, those who are dead in Christ, and then those who are alive will be caught up. And I guess in the twinkling of the eye, they'll be changed from the corruptible to the incorruptible. Because you cannot go into the kingdom like you are right now. Amen. So we thank the Lord for his provisions. We thank him for all that he's done. And you'll be able to know the difference as you go along. Because give us a call. That information will be at the end of the, at the conclusion of this recording. Let us know what you feel, what you think, and what you have heard. Are you encouraged by this message? Or uh, just give us a call. But we're looking for those who are said they have given their life to Christ. I bless you, I praise you, and glorify you in the blessed name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.